Hello Pico people and welcome to this new Picotron GUI tutorial. Today we're learning about every event in the Picotron GUI. So I just added two containers to this GUI I'm making and a border. To this container I attached a button with a sprite and uh, two methods we've seen a lot in this course which are click and release when we click the button click value becomes true and when we release the click it becomes false so when we draw a sprite we do if the button is clicked then draw the second sprite which is this one the number two okay if it's not clicked draw the default one i created a sprite value for this button now as you can see it acts as a normal button. We've also seen we have a tap method and uh, here we can make stuff happen when the user stops clicking on something. But if I click and just move a bit, nothing happens. Why is that? It's because when you click and move, the Picotron GUI library thinks you're dragging the element. What did I say? The drag? Yeah, the drag method. We have this too, okay? But we're gonna see this in a second. For now, I want you to know that we also have double click as a method. And we can make stuff happen like the tap method here if you want. So one click, nothing. Two clicks, changes. We also have the double tap method, which works the same way as the double click, but for the taps. Now, before we see the drag method, I want you to see the hover method. Now, what is the hover, you may say? This is a bit tricky because I can do cell sprite equal to 3 here. And as you see, when the mouse goes on top of the button, it changes, it becomes yellow. But when uh, I go away, it stays yellow, it doesn't go back to white. Well, it's obvious because we just said that on hover, change the sprite to 3. So we have to work around this a bit, but not too much, believe me. So self.sprite equal to 3 is good, but we also have to add a value to a button called t hover and set t hover to 0. When the user hovers on top of the element, we start t hover, the timer, by setting it to 2. Then on update, because we don't only have a draw method, but we also have an update method, here we can check, first of all, if our timer has been started, so if it's bigger than zero. If it is, inside this we check if t over is equal to one, and only then we can set our sprite to the default value, which is one. Finally, we can, oh yeah, I forgot, add self here. So then we can decrease our timer. So this becomes like a loop. Now, as you can see, it becomes yellow when I'm on top and it becomes white again when I go away. Right? And everything is as before. This is how buttons should work, I think. Finally, we can see this drag function we made. And this is very simple. We first have to get our mouse position and we can do it by doing this. Then we do simply self.x equals to mouse x and self.y equals to mouse y. But it's not going to work perfectly. As you see, we have it there. And why is that? It's because zero here is not at the start of the screen, but zero, it's here for the button because we attached it to the container. So we can just do minus container.x and minus container.y. Yeah. How do we drag it at the center? Because if I click it here, it, it's not very nice, right? Well, we can simply do it like this. We do minus self dot width divided by two and here too, by height, okay? So now it's at the center. How cool is the Picotron GUI library? I love it. This is why I love this. All right, so finally now we can see the mouse wheel method, which uh, we give to containers usually, because containers have content that needs to be scrolled but I don't know, you may be doing some experimental stuff, so try. So mouse wheels also have a message value. 
that gets passed to the method. Let's say I want to change the button position when I use the mouse wheel or the touchpad. The easiest solution is just doing button.x plus equal to message.wheelx. And we do the same thing for the y. Now it moves, right? And we can even change the speed of this. And to use this, we multiply our message wheel. I did something wrong here because for the X it's going to be minus and for the Y it's plus. Now your touchpad is going to act right. But as you can see it uh, can go out the container and we don't want it, right? So one thing we could do is make some new local variables like new X which is equal to button X minus this and local new Y which will be equal to this okay then we need to check if new x is bigger or equal to zero or if new x is smaller or equal to our container that width and only then we can make our button x equal to new x right and we have to do the same thing for the y new y container height, right? And it isn't working. Why? Because here we have to do and. It's always bigger than this or smaller than this. Duh. Now it stops at the edges, but not really. It stops just where you can't see it because x and y are here actually. So we have to do minus button dot width and minus button dot height. Now it works. All right. I hope this has been useful to you guys. And let me know if you want to see something in particular for the next tutorial, even if it's not GUI related. There's still a lot to cover, really. It seems like I covered a lot, but I still have a lot to cover, like animations and responsive design. We have Windows in Picotron, so why not use responsive design to make cool GUI? There are also a lot of elements we can see. We can see how to make GUI for games even, which is not very different from what we've learned. I hope you guys like this. Subscribe to be updated with every new video and lesson I'll make to also make me happy. And that's all. If you're already subscribed, see you next time.